Welcome everybody. My name is Mina Jane and I am the director of the Ashland Public Library here on a not so snowy night <laughs> in Massachusetts um, to hang out with Jody, aka Red Read Reviews, who is doing a monthly series with us on her picks for mostly horror and thriller books, but sometimes she throws in another something. It's always fun to hear. So I will send out a list to everybody uh, to everybody who's registered of her recommendations for tonight. So you can just sit back and enjoy and listen. If you have a question, please put it in the in the Q&A and I will make sure that I ask Jody sometime during our 30 minutes. And if you want to chat, Jody is paying attention to that. <laughs> Feel free to you know chat with each other as well. Make sure you put your book recommendations up in the chat as well. So if you have something that you want to tell other people that you've been reading this month, other people can pick it up too. Jody, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank and you for having me. Yeah, always. Um, let's get started. What do you got up for? Uh, up okay, for first off, um, we had snow in Connecticut today. We had, I think it got about 10 inches of snow. Um, so the first book I want to suggest, it's a thriller, but it's a really light thriller um, by Luann Rice. And it just came out this month um, called um, Last Night. And it takes place at the Ocean House, which you can see on the cover. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can see the Ocean House, which is in Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. um, and it takes place during a blizzard, which is why when I first read the book, I read it during the first snowstorm we had. I think it was like a month ago. And it just like gave me the whole experience. Um, and this one, it's about um, a woman who is staying at the Ocean House with her daughter and she gets murdered. And then her daughter gets kidnapped. And it becomes this horrible just it's a thriller it's a thriller but Luann writes thrillers so well so it's not like it's not super scary so if you're like don't want to be freaked out it's good for beginner thrillers mm. um but there are reoccurring characters in the book that have been in her other two thrillers which are The Shadow Box and Last Day you are not a newbie at this, are you? <laughs> no, I'm not. I should have all the books on hand that I'm going to suggest except for one. So I'm I'm trying here. Um, mm -hmm. But so if, it's nice because some of the characters kind of, you know, you don't, it can be read as a standalone. All of these three books can be read as a standalone. But I recommend starting from the last day because that's where you get the introduction from the characters. And you, you kind of fall in love with the characters and that makes the story. Luann Rice is just excellent at, characters mm -hmm. so that's my snowy day wreck uh -huh. well i am going to say that i only read books in order so i would read it oh, the I'm beginning. The same way. Yeah. Um, but i do have a question for you really quick now is this a, a turn for Luann rice because i was thought she did more like women's fiction almost well, if you think about it all of the other books that she's written have some sort of a crime in them right like there's maybe a murder mm -hmm. or some sort of conflict so it's not something new to her but she's she's taking more of the genre on and getting a little bit darker she's never going to get dark she's too nice of a person to get there and she loves her characters too much so she's baby stepping into thrillers she has written some YA thrillers as well which mm -hmm. she's got another one coming out which I'm like super excited for and she just sent me the cover and I'm like I'm ready for it so um I think it's great you know okay. authors that can write in more than one genre says a lot about them. Mm -hmm. She's just, she just knows how to write in general. So that's my snow day recommendation. I'm going to jump on to Valentine's Day recommendations. Um, so my idea of romance might be a little different than yours. <laughs> I know you're into floofy, what is it like Bridgerton? Yeah, yeah, you're a Bridgerton. That's not me. I can't do Bridgerton. I can't do, you know, oh, well, it's me stuff. So, um, <laughs> so you. Yeah, uh, Caroline Kapnis, you. It's if you've seen the Netflix show, then you have an idea what the what the book is about. The book is better than the show. I think uh, you get more into Joe's mind. Um, you was about he is a stalker, but he has a really big heart, and he loves the women that he stalks. So this is why I consider it. A, it's a don't look at me like that. It's a romance. It's totally a romance. Joe is he's handsome and he's smart and he's funny. He's a little creepy and he may keep people in his basement, but I think that if everybody had the opportunity to do that, they would too. So this is like my ideal romance book. I really absolutely love Joe. And I believe there's three or four books in this series, which I do have, and I did not put those out in my cart. Um, he gets a little bit darker with every book, um, but he's still the same, same guy that just wants to be loved. He just wants love, I mean, a love. 
<laughs> it's just he wants to keep you in his basement, but he just wants love. <laughs> That's okay, a love story. I have to ask you, did you discover the book first or did you discover the show first? The book first. Got it. I, and I met her. I met Carolina, kind of like ran into her. At, she's from Massachusetts. <clears throat> I ran into her at a um, convenience store at the Cape on my way to go see her at an event. And I had like a stalkery moment. It was it was pretty weird. I, and then I saw her at a restaurant afterwards and I had to tell her, I'm like, I swear to God, I am not stalking you. I know I'm obsessed with obsession, but I'm not stalking you. <laughs> okay, well, somebody just said, I mean, is it in a finished basement at least? <laughs> oh, it, oh my God. It's so he has, uh, I'm not ruining it when I tell you this. Um, oh my he, God, Sarah. He, he he um he restores old books so he's got this like temperature controlled glass room in the basement um so like you know the people he keeps in there are they can breathe clean air and it's nice and warm and it's not like they're sitting shackled to a wall it's he he gives them all the love he can he takes care of them and the books which is nice <laughs> <It's funny. laughs> anybody that respects books you know has a good heart it's creepy, but it's love. This is love. This is my love. Um, my <laughs> second recommendation, and you're not going to like this one at all. This one is horror, and it is super duper gross. Um, the uh, It's in this book. This is his um, a book of short stories, but Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Met by Eric LaRocca. I'm pretty sure I'm saying his last name wrong. He is um, a Boston resident. I think he came to you. Did he come to your horror fest? Yeah. yeah. Um, I love him. <laughs> nicest human in the world. I absolutely adore adore him um <laughs> he likes to write about love and he likes to write about religion and he doesn't hold anything back and so the love story is not it's a love story um about the, this couple these um two women that meet online and they're they have this correspondence and they're you're talking back and forth about things from memories and um stuff from their childhood and it's all it all starts with an apple peeler one is trying to buy an apple peeler from the other and it becomes a relationship but it becomes like an obsession <laughs> again with the obsession don't don't harp on me about obsession but that's what i think of love i think of obsession um it's gross like there is a scene in there that i actually got nauseous reading which i you know why do i do that to myself because horror makes you feel all the feels and eric makes you feel it really deep in your heart he just he writes from the heart and it it's just really great. And so it, that's a love story. Um, if you want to get into frilly frou frou love stories, I have two that I will tell you. I don't have copies of the books um, because if they would not fit on my shelves. I feel like they would be, you know, the books would fight with them. Um, You've relegated them to the basement. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> I did read them when they first came out, though. Um, the Giver of Stars. Have mm. you ever read that? Yeah. What, how do you say her last name? Jojo Mo Moyes? Mo Moise, Moise, Moise. I think Moise. Moise, Moise. I feel like I'm butchering it. Yeah. Um, so The Giver of Stars is one of my all-time favorite books. It's about the um the when they used to do libraries on the back of horses and they would deliver books to people's houses, which I think should be still a thing. And there's a love story. Oh, it's, it really is. Beverly, it really is like the best book. It like uh, I cried like a baby. So that's why I don't read these books because then I cry and it's not pretty. <laughs> um so that just the classic if you if you want a so good good solid did you book. Like, did you like that one better than the one that became the movie? This is the end of Me the Before You or Me, me Before After You Me Before You. Yeah. Oh God. Um Me Before You hit me really hard too. I think I did like it better. I think I did like Giver of Stars better. I, I don't know. There was it was just it was so beautifully written and there was mm -hmm. just a lot of magical moments in it. So that one oh ripped my heart out. Uh but I think this is the thing is I don't like romance that is like, let's go on a date type romances. I like a, a story. I like a love story that like starts from nothing becomes something. So my second recommendation would be The Great Alone by um, Kristen Hanna, which is another rip your heart out and stomp on it, make you cry. Ugly. <laughs> yes. Tissues. I, I, I either read things that make you cry or make you want to vomit. So, <laughs> so I guess you're going to need the tissues out no matter what you do. Um, <laughs> But the great alone, uh, Kristen Hannah knows how to write a book. I mean, God, that one, I read that for my book club and they, all well, my whole book club was like, oh my God, why did you do this to me? You know, and they're like crying and it was just such a wonderful book. So that's my love story. Now I'm moving on to thrillers. I'm done with this Valentine's crap. Um, 
another, I have a lot of local writers on my list. Uh, Edwin Hill, mm. Massachusetts writer. Uh, he wrote his newest book, Who to Believe. Have you read that one yet? No. Oh my God, it's so good. It's so, <laughs> it really is. It's my first time reading his stuff. And it's like, everybody's a suspect. You don't know who the killer is. There's a woman that dies and there's like, a, there's a love triangle in there and there's jealousy and revenge. And, and it's got like, oh, I want to say seven characters and they're all, they all play an important role in the end and each one of them gets their own like narrative um it's just oh it's so well written it's it's a whodunit it's a whodunit I swear to god I thought every single person was a suspect like I every single chapter I'm like well they definitely did it well <clears throat> of course they did it um and my favorite character is Farley Drake and he's a psychiatrist and he's a bit of a um he's a little bit evil I think that's why I like him mm -hmm. um but it was just a phenomenal, phenomenal book. I, Edwin gets big props for that one. Now, is that more thriller versus horror or is that? I, he's thriller. That's yeah. not horror. That's thriller. Yeah. Okay. Um, There's not gore. I don't believe there's really any blood either. The murder scenes, I don't even think he, he goes into how the people are really murdered. Mm -hmm. It's you, you kind of have an idea. It's really about the hunt of who did it, figuring mm -hmm. out who did it. Um, I like those kind of books as well. It sounds like almost like a psychological thriller yeah you know like gets into your brain like you want to you know you don't know who done it yeah right right he really he he did a great job with that and I and I was I had to take notes while I was reading it which I don't normally do because there were so many characters at play and you've got to keep track of you know who has a relation with this person and then where does this person come in because there's so many and then there's a teenager in there um and there's even a perspective from the dog <laughs> right Okay, that's it, creative. It works. It did work. You're, you'll laugh if you read it. Um, so ideas. that's my big thriller wreck. I'm going through my list really quick. Am I talking too fast? Does anybody think that I'm talking too fast? I tend to talk fast. No, I um, think last time I was asking more questions. So, oh. you know, we might get through your list fast and we'll just uh, chat. I got add-ons too, if I, if I run out of stuff that I can mention. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this one is... It's not a thriller. I think they're, <laughs> um, thank you. I think they call it speculative fiction. Is that a thing? Yeah, speculative fiction. Okay, um, I'm new to that. Mm -hmm. And so this one, the the publisher sent me a copy of it and I'm like, mm, I don't know if I'm gonna like this. I'm kind of like, you know, stuck in my thriller mindset kind of thing. They're like, no. I think you're gonna like this I'm like all right fine I'll read it um it's called Annie Bot, mm -hmm. and it's by Sierra Greer I let my copy out so I do not have a cover to show you which makes me incredibly mad I think I gave it to my boss um the cover is it's a like pink latex kind of look it's a little weird but it goes with the story um it's about AI it's about it's essentially about a sex robot. Okay, I know that sounds like, oh my God, it's gonna be like erotic fiction. There's gonna be some major sex scenes in there. And then there's like two sex scenes in there. And they're they're very, they're very nice and modest. They're not that bad. Um, so this this uh robot, Annie, was created to be what they call a cuddle bunny. So she's a sex robot, but you know, you can have a relationship with her. And they have this, she has an ever evolving mind through the whole entire book. So she's she's more than a robot, she becomes a companion. And you know, he's, he, he's eventually, he falls in love with her, but he fights with her and he falls in love with her and it, and, but he expects so much out of her and, and she's always wondering, is there more than this? Mm -hmm. Um, but she's AI, right? So what else is there for her? And the AI is accepted in this book. You know, it's people, people have them. People have them to do their, you know, cleaning. I want one to do my cleaning. I'd love one for a sex robot for my husband and get him off my back. Um, <laughs> sign me up. So <laughs> the, the book touches on um, domestic abuse, um, toxic relationships, and that now technological advances uh, how far is too far mm. you know you can create this robot to bring your dead child back to life but is it it's not going to be your dead child it can't replace that human mm -hmm. i don't know um but it, it she's she's so the whole book i'm reading it 
and I I can't decide if I like it her if she's too human for me the whole time I have to remind myself that she's not human um I'm, I'm trying to see it from the perspective of She's got these emotions. She's got these. It's such a freaking amazing book, man. Like she gets into it. You feel, you feel all this love for her and you're brooding for her. And, but she's a freaking robot, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like you're bought and paid for, right? Mm -hmm. mm. And woman in a relationship and a marriage is bought and paid for. You mm -hmm. know, there's a lot of that. I was screaming. I was pissed through most of the book. I was angry. Not going to lie. I yelled a lot. Um, it's a good conversation starter. I think it would be an excellent book club pick, um, especially in a book, a group of mostly women. Um, it just feels like there can be so much, so much deep diving into this book. And I actually got to meet the writer, um, was it last month? And she, oh my God, she's so in love with this book. She's in love with the characters. And she, you know, she, it's called Anybot, A-N-N-I-E-B-O-T um, by Sierra Greer. And look for this gorgeous pink cover. Like, it just, uh, Ooh. this is like my highlight book. Like, I, I just, and it's not even in my genre. I'm like reading it. I'm like, what is wrong with me? I'm not, you know, going over to the dark side. This is not me. But sometimes, you know, change is good. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's got dark moments. Have you, there, there's that show, um, Her. Have you seen that one or heard of that one? the movie right with Joaquin yeah. Phoenix yeah, yeah so yeah, it's yeah. a lot like that mm -hmm. except he never gets to meet her because she's kind of like a, a okay so it's like that but she's got this like perfect beautiful body that he got to custom pick out her eyes and her he picks out her hair then he buys all her clothes and what he wants her to wear and this is this is he's such an ass he is completely control he's in control of his relationship even though he bought her he's in control of her and but the whole time, keep in mind, her, her mind is evolving. She knows that she belongs to him, but, you know, she knows what's happening is wrong and that there is more than what she's been given. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, there's a couple situations that you get uncomfortable and there's a couple situations where you're like, oh, my God, this is so awesome. It's just, oh, it's just so well written. I, I'm excited for anything this woman puts out because I was hooked. I mm -hmm. guess um, she used to write YA fiction. Mm. but under a different name like Sierra Greer is her pen name I forgot what her real name is um but that's what she was writing her YA I'm gonna forever call her Sierra Greer mm -hmm. she was referred to by both things when I met her um so if I mean if this book is good I can imagine what her YA fantasy is like mm -hmm. so that might actually be more my speed because I uh it'll, YA tends to be a little bit lighter right mm -hmm. it's not as um as maybe harsh or something like that yeah I don't, know. I don't know the word that's not the right word because they, Why can get deep. they, they get into the deeper topics mm -hmm. but they don't get too far because they don't want to upset the kids mm -hmm. so I, I, I read a lot I actually was going to recommend another YA book um so after this I have I would like to say oh no I didn't bring that up I have to talk about that one the house of last resort another oh, yes. Massachusetts yep yep Christopher Golden. Yeah. This book was so good. Um, <laughs> oh, it was so good. It, it's the ideal, like you're given the opportunity to move out of the country and get this house and restore it and live there for pennies, right? Who doesn't want to do that? This, the people in this um, book go to Italy and are going to start their whole new life by themselves in Italy. They have this great, you know, do, do it yourself house. We're going to fix it up. And, and it, it, the house has history bad history mm. there's 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 a little bit of demon possession okay <laughs> <laughs> a little a little bit of demon possession but christopher golden is amazing with writing settings i think i believe he went to italy when he was writing this i feel like i saw his instagram flooded with italy i think i'm right um oh it's just so good this is so good this one came out two weeks ago i believe and he had a big horror festival um to celebrate the did you you didn't go to that did you no, I went to it oh my god it was amazing I saw oh. you post about it and I was just like oh <laughs> so many good writers there and it was so chill and laid back and it was all about the love of books and and if you've met Chris you know that he's just like the most awesome human and he like 
you get him talking and it's like talking to the wizard. He mm -hmm. he knows all the great and powerful Oz. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, he's so smart. And I'm and this book has been um on my TBR for a while because it's just you know, he's just such a good writer. Yeah, yeah. He he writes horror, but he writes it's not gory, it's 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 scary. It's like spine yeah. tingling. But it also makes you think. You know, it's mm -hmm. not just to scare your pants off. It's really to make you think about what the world around you, which I find very fascinating about his writing. Yeah. Well, this one has a little bit of um, like church cover up going on um, with, you know, they people that were thought to be possessed. They put into this one space and they were trying to get the demons out of them. And, and but the church didn't want people to know about it. And then, you know when these people die, what do you do with the bodies? It just becomes this whole big thing. And then, oh my God, it just crashes at the end. It, oh, it's, it's awesome. This one's it's such a good book. <laughs> um, I have my next one was actually, it's Black History Month, is it not? Yes, I've it is. One of my favorite writers. Yes. <laughs> have you read him? Have you I read have this? Been, no, I have not. No, but I will. I will. I'll put it on my list. You disappoint me so much. I have, I have so much. I teach you, I will. I will. Uh, S.A. Cosby. He is just, every book is, gets better and better. Um, this is his most recent book, 2023. Yep, came out in June. Um, this one is about the a Black sheriff in a really racist community of Virginia. Um, his name's Titus Crown. I did this as an audiobook, honestly. I they send me the physical copies, but <laughs> I will only ever read him on audio because he has the same narrator narrator for all of his audiobooks. And that man has a voice. It's like this sexy, gravelly, like, oh my God, can't tell me a bedtime story, but you know, give me a little feel up at the same time kind of voice. Like mm -hmm. he's just, oh, it's so sexy and dark and deep and 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 he embodied Titus um, amazingly. Like, I just absolutely loved him. Um, the book is about him hunting a serial killer with connections to a local church, but it's much more than that. It's, you know, there's so much racism in the town and they don't want him to be the sheriff because he's black, because they're stupid. And, you know, he's trying to, to break that. He wants to help the black youth come up and, and say that, you know, we're not going to hurt you. We're a part of your town. He always gets the message across. Mm -hmm. Razor Blade Tears, he did it. It's just, oh my God, he's such a freaking amazing writer. He's, he is my top bucket list, I think, to, to meet. Stephen King, obviously, is my first, which I was you like four tiers. It was four tiers away from Stephen King at an event. So I got to breathe the same air. <laughs> so I maybe if that. that's all I ever get, I'm okay with that. Um, but he is definitely my number two, which mm -hmm. I think I might have a chance to meet him um at a festival, I think in April. But um I'm gonna have to hug him because he's like this squishy man. He's gonna be at Nikon. Yeah, I know. I'm debating whether or not I'm gonna go to Nikon. So that's like a three day thing, right? Yeah, yeah. I get worn out real quick. Christopher's thing. Uh, the House of Last Resort. I was only there for one day, and that and I was exhausted. <laughs> I, I'm not young. All day panels, and then no, you barely get a bathroom break, and they don't give you food. I'm like just gonna pass out. Oh, totally worth going to <laughs> if you're gonna fangirl because you, you like I had full access to everybody, and I like that. But man, I am not getting any younger, and I need to have my time with my favorite writers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hadn't heard he was going to be in, around in April, but I did know he's going to be here in July. In July, so, so I think um, um, there's a there's a thing in the Hamptons. So we're going to get all posh with the Hamptons. Um, Hamptons Who Done It? I don't know if you've heard about that. No. Okay, so they're doing. I think well, last year may have been the first year they do a literary thing. Um, where I think Riley Sager went last year. They have some big names, some little names, and I pretty sure I heard S.A. Cosby's going to be there. I could be wrong, but I'm praying he's going to be there. Um, oh, I, you know what? I read Nora Roberts. Okay. All right. I do like romance. No, I don't. I did. I went through a phase. I read Nora Roberts early 2000s. Mm -hmm. Wow. That was a long time ago. Yeah. Well, 
Yeah. Well, I read Inheritance. And did you? I really, yes, I really did like it. And um, I think it's classic Nora, you know, like, um, I can't remember the actual story. Is um, Do you want to remind me? Um, me Is see. it magic? Does it have magic in it? Because she always has a little bit of magic in her, her stories. Times. Yeah. Oh, Inheritance. Okay. So it is book one of a trilogy and, you know, her trilogies are amazing. Um, so I did not read this one, but I read almost everything by her because I think that she, she's a comfort read. She's a comfort read. Like she, you always know what she's, what's going to, like how it's going to sort of play out. You know, the language she's going to use. You, you know, that there's going to be happily ever after. Um, I find her to, I just, I just really enjoy her for like books that um, I know are going to be well-written and I know what I'm getting into. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. in my in my phase in the in the two thousands, I um I read everything she had written. Mm -hmm. I binged it, so mm -hmm. I was going you know trilogy to trilogy to trilogy, and I think I burnt myself out. So I haven't picked up anything from hers in a long time. But I remember being obsessed with them. Yeah. I wouldn't be opposed to starting something newer by her. Mm -hmm. You know, she writes um mystery under another name. JD have you Rob. read any of those? I read all of them. Of Every course, you have. Are they good? One. They're really good. They're sci-fi, romance, detective, um, you know, found family. They're just so good. If you read the In Death series by J.D. Robb, you will not be, not, um, but you have to read them in order. There's a buildup of relationship through in the entire series. And she's up to like book 58 or something. So it's, it's a, it's a commitment. It's 58 <laughs> books for that one series? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. What is it called so in death? <laughs> in death I'm taking notes <laughs> okay so that the first book is born in death and um, okay it's it's a rough read because um there's you know abuse and you know trigger warnings and things like that pretty bad so and then but the the storyline through those 58 books is how she the main character eve dallas sort of deals with that within herself and with the relationships around her so it's yeah. very much that found family thing which i absolutely love yeah i agree Mm -hmm. Oh, and the Boston Girl, so good by um, now I'm forgetting her name. Anita, is that Anita? Anita uh, Shreve? No, no, Beverly. Help me out here. The Boston Girl. Um, Linda Lavin was the narrator. Oh my gosh, that must have been a hoot. Um, but yeah, um, I think a narrator narrator can make or break a book. I agree with you. I'd be mm -hmm. interested in doing the the Born and Death books on audio. I wonder, did you do them on audio or did you read them? I read them and then I, then I listened to them. Um, very good. Yeah. Um, yeah, the narrator is really good. But um, you know how like um, if a narrator doesn't do one character well, it just like throws a whole book off for you. Yeah. That was at the beginning, but I think she got better. Yeah. Yeah. But this, you have to read them, Jody. If you like all of that, you would I think I, I think I will, but I, this sounds like this is going to be a journey. This is like, it's going to take me a while to get through them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a commitment. Yeah. And you have to take, break it up, read like two or three or four at a time. Anita Diamond. That's right. I love her. Um, know, what else has she written? She's written, was it she, did, <laughs> she wrote The Red Tent. And oh, um, why do we know that? Did I read that? I don't think I read that, but it's a gorgeous awesome. cover. Gorgeous cover. Um, she's also Boston based, I believe. Um, Yes. But anyways, we were talking about the narrator. Linda Lavin um, read her book, The The Boston Girl. Um, anyways, so <laughs> we are actually about out of time. So we can't go into your over overflow list. But... Okay, but can I say one yeah. one last thing? Actually, yeah. you actually almost got my whole entire list. Um, I do have an indie horror writer that Ooh. I want to recommend because mm -hmm. um, I like to get the little guys in there. And he went to your, I believe, one of your um, horror events, Tom R Reimer. Reimer, yes. Yeah, He's I read so his book, Ma Malevolent, Malevolent, Cinnamon, Malevolent, <laughs> Nevers. It was fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Blew me away. It had all of the creepy things you need in a book. And it's got clowns. It's got rituals. It's got creepy old ladies and flowy gowns. It's just it, everything. Um, and it had a heart, you know, a relationship between a father and a son in the middle of it all and an old family. And it was so freaking well written. Like mm -hmm. I was, that was my first book by him. I've met him. I don't know how many times he's the nicest guy. And that 
I'm like on him now. I'm, I'm all about his books. So I made sure have to plug him because I always want to make sure the little guys get a little voice. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize he was an indie published author. That's really yep. interesting um, because he has a bunch of things out and very diverse, like very, very different books. Yeah, well, this is, I think this is the only one I own by him. Um, it's the one that he told me to buy when I met him at your event. Uh-huh. <laughs> what's the title again? Yeah, is that a trick question? You want me to try to pronounce this for you again? Uh, <laughs> it's Malevolent Nevers. Did I say it right? You did. Good job. <laughs> and on that note, I do thank you, Jody, for this wonderful half hour of recommendations. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And thank you all for being here. I will send out a list later today or tomorrow and um, happy reading. Um, We will see you next month. (laughs) Good night, everybody. Bye.